In this video, I'll show you how you can create a content carousel with Force Navigation. I like to use a click to reveal for simple chunking of content in my e-learning course. And it's fine for, you know, three, four, five different click to reveals. But once you start getting to six, seven, eight, nine click to reveals, that's a lot of real estate to use up with a bunch of click buttons. So instead, I like to use a content carousel. Now, a content carousel is simply a multi-state object with a forward and a backward arrow and you can scroll through all of the different states within that multi-state object and it can be done very simply just by using the go to next state or go to previous state uh, actions but invariably two things are going to come to mind is that your stakeholder is going to say well how can i keep going around and around and around forever and not let my learner know that they've reached the end of the content. The other thing too, of course, is uh, invariably you'll get the question about forced navigation. I don't want them to see that next button until they've gone through all the content. So here's my solution for that. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to need are a left and right arrow, which I've already added to this slide. These are simple images that I'm using as buttons. And I've created a multi-state object that not only contains some text, but I've gone into the multi-state view and added images for each of the text captions that I have as individual states. Uh, this is just fictitious content, but it's designed to illustrate that your multi-state object can contain many different things. Uh, once I've got that set up, I need a next button on my slide. And again, you know, as we've mentioned, that stakeholders often will want you to hide the next button until, of course, the user has visited all the content. So I've got this already set up to be not visible in output here. The very first thing that we need to create now that we've got all the objects on our slide is a tracking variable for us to keep track of which position in our carousel that we're actually located at. So in this case, I'm going to click on the project drop down menu and select variables. I'm going to click on add new and we're going to call this variable underscore content underscore tracker. We're going to give it an initial value because we're going to start on the first position when we arrive on this slide and we'll go ahead and hit save. I can go ahead and close the variables window and we're now going to create our first advanced action. And this advanced action is for the on enter of the slide, just so that we can set up the slide to look the way we want it to look when we arrive on this particular page. So I'm going to go ahead and click on project and select advanced actions. And we're going to call this content enter. Now in this case here, we're going to do a number of things. We're going to, first of all, we're going to hide the left arrow because we're on the first position. There's no possibility of going to a zero position or a negative position. So we're going to hide the arrow. So there's no reason for the learner to click on left. So we'll go ahead and hide that. Alternatively, you could display a disabled state if it were a multi-state object and disable the button from functioning. I'm gonna keep this relatively simple today. So we're gonna hide the left arrow. We are going to ensure that our multi-state object is on the first uh, state here. So we're going to change the state of our multi-state object to normal and we are going to assign our tracking variable again if this is the second time arriving on this slide we want to make sure everything is reset back to normal so we're going to assign our tracking variable a value of one these three things is pretty much all we need um, as a precaution in case we were on the very last state and for some reason i've selected uh, retains uh, state on slide visit. I think it's probably a good precaution to also show my 
right arrow as well. So let's just make sure that everything is as it is the first time we arrive. So I'm going to save this as an action, click OK, and in this case I'll click on Close, and we'll make sure that the on enter action for our slide is Execute Advanced Actions, and our content enter advanced action is running. Now, the next thing I'm going to work on is my right arrow. When I write this, you'll probably say to yourself, maybe some of these steps are redundant, but in the interest of making this easy to understand and also to be able to use it to create my left arrow advanced action, uh, you'll see that I'm very thorough on, on everything that I do on each of the steps here. So let's click on the project dropdown and select advanced action. And we're going to create right underscore arrow. Now this is going to be a multi-tab decision advanced action. So we're going to start with our first tab, which I'm going to call click. This takes care of what happens when I click that particular button. And simply put, we're going to increment our content tracker by a value of one. So when we're on position one, it'll become position two, or if we're on position two, it'll become position three and so on. And that's it for the first one. The next one, we're going to take a look at what we want to change to the slide if we're on position one. And you might be thinking to yourself again, if you're using the right arrow, um, you'll never see position one from clicking the right arrow. That's okay. Again, this is the redundancy I'm talking about and it helps to keep it simple and it helps you to reuse this structure when you're creating the left arrow advanced action as well. So let's call this position one and this will be a conditional advanced action and we're going to check the value of our tracking variable. So we're going to select variable content tracker and we'll see if it is equal to the literal value of one. If it is, we want to do a number of things. We're going to, first of all, hide the left arrow. We're going to show the right arrow, again, mostly as a precaution, and we're going to change the state of our multi-state object to its first position, which in this case is normal. Now, this is what's great about advanced actions in Adobe Captivate. I don't have to recreate this for position two. I can use the duplicate decision tab button to duplicate this. We'll relabel this to position two and we'll just change a couple of small things here. So first thing, we'll change the if statement to look for uh, when the content tracker is equal to two. So we'll say literal value of two and on this position, we want to show both the left and right arrow. So I'm going to change this one to a show command. And we'll have that left arrow. We'll change the state of our multi-state object to position number two. And I'll duplicate this again for our third position. And we'll use the value of three for our if then portion of the statement will continue to show the left and the right arrow and we're just going to change our content to number three. We'll duplicate this once more and this will be for our fourth and final position in the content carousel. So we'll be checking if our tracking variable is equal to four and if it is we're actually going to hide the right arrow And we're going to change the state of our multi-state content to position number four. But because this is our last position, we're also going to show our previously hidden next button here. So we'll select show and the next button there. And we'll save this as an action and click OK. Now that takes care of our right arrow. We need to duplicate this again for our left arrow. But the good news is the only thing we need to change is in our first click position here. So I'm going to click on the duplicate action icon and we'll just relabel this to be left arrow. Get rid of that one there. 
And instead of incrementing our content tracker by a value of one, we're going to decrement or decrement our content tracker by a value of one. And of course I can delete this first line here. So that's all that has to change. All of this stuff is still checking for and changing the various things that we would normally change. So let's update that action, click OK and click close. And now we can make sure that these actions are assigned to the appropriate button. So our left arrow here, we'll make sure that that's execute advanced actions and left arrow and the right arrow will execute advanced actions again and choose right arrow. And let's just double check that our next button is not visible in output. And let's go to next slide. And of course our on enter is content enter. So let's test this out and see if it works as expected. Preview HTML5 in browser. So here we go. We've arrived on our slide with our content carousel. As you can see, our left arrow is not visible in output. We're going to go ahead and press our right arrow. The left arrow now appears. So I could go back to position one if I want to, but we'll go forward. And once we arrive on position number four, the right arrow disappears. Our next button appears. And again, we can still continue to explore the content carousel. And when we're ready to proceed with the rest of our course, we can click on the next button to continue. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.